so good morning so we shall continue our discussion on uh, measure theory measure theory so the next one is to interesting answer to the two questions mainly the related with the measure of uh, countable set and borel set and measurable set see we have seen that countable set has measure zero what about uh, the the if the set has measure zero whether it has to be countable and one more question is every borel set are measurable is every measurable set are borel set so let's uh, see this okay now the answer to both of both these questions will be obtained by cantor set cantor set now what is cantor set so consider first consider a closed interval 0 comma 1 closed interval 0 comma 1 say let's denote this say this is closed interval 0 comma 1 now divide this into three equal segment that is it is 1 by 3 1 by 3 and this is 2 by 3 then this is 3 by 3 and that is nothing but 1 now remove the middle open interval 1 by 3 and 2 by 3 we get we get closed interval 0 comma 1 by 3 union union 2 by 3 comma 1 so if we remove if we remove from closed interval 0 comma 1 if we remove the open interval 1 by 3 comma 2 by 3 we get this we call this set as c1 c1 now from this c1 c1 that is now c1 is nothing but it is 0 comma closed interval 0 comma 1 by 3 and union 2 by 3 comma 1 2 by 3 comma 1 now again divide this each of this interval into three segment that is we get it is 1 by 9 and this is 2 by 9 this is 3 by 9 and this 2 by 3 and this is 7 by 9 and this is 8 by 9 and this is 9 by 9 okay now again remove open interval 1 by 9 comma 2 by 9 and 7 by 9 comma 8 by 9 from from uh, the from this c1 c1 we get we get closed interval 0 comma 1 by 9 union 2 by 9 comma 1 by 3 union 2 by 3 union closed interval 2 by 3 comma 7 by 9 union 8 by 9 comma comma 1 comma 1 we denote this set by C2. Again, we consider C3 by removing one third of open interval, one third middle open interval from each of this closed interval, closed interval, and we get C3. C3. If you observe, if you observe, C1, C1 is a disjoint, two disjoint union of closed interval. C2 is four disjoint union of closed interval. And if I remove, if, if I find C3, C3 will be now from this we get two intervals 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 so in total we get eight intervals so c3 is disjoint union of eight intervals in other words c3 is nothing but disjoint union of two power three intervals c2 is nothing but disjoint union of two square intervals c1 is disjoint union of two power one interval closed intervals Yes. Now, in general, in general, if we continue the process, which we continue the process, we get C K is the disjoint union of two power k closed intervals. Closed intervals. Now, observe, observe. In C one, in C one, each subinterval has length one by three. In C two, it it reduced to 1 by 9 and if we go with c3 it will be the first interval will be 0 comma 1 by 27 hence each interval as length 1 by 27 
that is nothing but 1 by 3 cube. So, so in C2, the interval length is 1 by 3 square. In C1, interval length is 1 by 3 power 1. So, in general, in general, while we continuing the process, we get CK as a disjoint union of 2 power K closed interval. Each of length is, each of length is 1 by 3 power K. 1 by 3 power K. Now, now, now we got a collection, we got a collection CK of closed interval, closed, closed sets of closed set. They are not closed intervals because, because each CK is a union of closed in intervals, intervals and hence each CK is a closed set, each phase CK is a closed set, hence each CK is a collection of closed subsets, closed subsets of closed interval 0, 0,1 with the property that with the property that each CK is disjoint union of 2 to the power K closed interval and each of length is, each interval is of length is 1 by 3 power K, 3 power K. Now, we take, uh, we have also, also observe that, observe that this collection, collection is a decreasing sequence. This, because CK plus 1 is contained in CK. You can clearly observe this from this. C2 is constructed from C1 and C2 is contained in C1. C3 is also constructed from C2 and C2 is contained in C2. So, CK plus 1 is contained in CK for all K. And it's a decreasing sequence of closed set. Closed set with the property that each CK is a 2 to the power K closed intervals. Each of length is 1 by 3 power K. Okay, now we take the intersection of this CK when K ranges from 1 to infinity and we call this intersection as the Cantor set and we denote it by the letter C. It is called as the Cantor set. It's called the Cantor set. So, Cantor set is obtained by from closed interval 0, 0,1 by removing one third, one third middle open interval and from the, uh, from the what resultant uh, set that is C1, we are again uh, using uh, the, going with the, going with the removal of re one by third middle open interval from each of the disjoint closed interval and hence we are constructing the closed Cantor set, Cantor set. Now, now, observe, observe, clearly this C is closer set, clearly it is closer set because each CK is closer set being a, inter, in a, being a union of closed intervals, each CK is closer set and intersection is also closer set, so this C is a closer set, C is a closer set. Also, also, since each CK, each CK is 2 to the power K disjoint union of 2 to the power K closed intervals, intervals, each intervals are measurable. So, this disjoint union of 2 to the power K intervals is again measurable. Therefore, each CK is measurable, each CK is measurable and, and this is an, it's a countable intersection of closer set, hence this C is also measurable and this C is also measurable. It's a measurable set because measurable set form a sigma collection of all measurable set form a sigma algebra. Sigma algebra. Now, now what is a measure of CK? What is a measure of CK? Now, observe CK is the disjoint union of disjoint union of 2 to the power k, 2 to the power k closed intervals, 2 to the power k closed intervals and what is each of length? Each of length is 1 by 3 power k. So, if I find the length of each of these intervals and I add and what is the each of length? Length is nothing but 1 by 3 power k. If I add all this length, we are getting the measure of c power k, c k, c k. That is the measure of c k will be 1 by 3 power k and it is multiplied with 2 power k because there are 2 power k intervals and this is nothing but 2 by 3 whole power k, whole power k. Now, now, since 
C is the intersection of CK, CK. C is always contained in CK for all K and therefore by the monotonicity of measure we have M of C is less than or equal to M of CK and we know that M of CK is nothing but 2 to the power 2 by 3 whole to the power K. Now as K is large, as K is large or as K tend to infinity this tend to 0 therefore we get M of C is less than or equal to 0 also it is greater than or equal to 0 therefore we have measure of C is 0. zero. So this implies Cantor set as measure 0. Cantor set has set as measure 0. Measure 0. Now, now, is C, that's Cantor set, is countable? Is Cantor set is countable? Suppose, suppose, suppose it is countable. Suppose C is countable. Its scanter set is countable. Then we can write the element of C as an enumeration of sequence of distinct terms. Say C is equal to sequence E k where k ranges from 1 to infinity. 1 to infinity. It's a sequence of distinct term. term. Now E1 is an element in E1 is an element in C and C is nothing but intersection of C k k ranges from 1 to infinity this implies e belongs to ck for all k belong for L, for all k in particularly in particular in particular e1 belongs to c1 now what do you know about c1 c1 is disjoint union of two intervals therefore this e1 must be in one of the interval it cannot be in both the interval because the union is disjoint now Suppose E is not in this union, not in this set. Suppose E1 is not in this set, then take this set as F1. F1. Otherwise, otherwise, if C E if E E is in this closed interval, then take F1 as this closed interval. That is, that is, we, we choose the closed interval F1 such that E1 is not in F1. E1 is not in F1. Now, now, let Again, again, now point E2, that's, yeah, sorry, the, uh, the, uh, in the sequence E2, E2 is an element of C, E2 is an element of C, and this C is nothing but intersection of CK, K ranges from 1 to infinity. Now, this implies E2 is also belongs to CK, it is true for all K, in particular, in particular. E2 belongs to C2. Now, what do you know about C2? C2 is the disjoint union of 2 to the power 2 that is 4 closed interval 4 closed intervals now, now out of this 4 intervals 2 intervals is always contained in f1 f1 because f1 is a closed interval in c1 and c2 is constructed from c1 now using the observe the construction and observe that at least 2 at least two closed interval uh, that uh, exactly two uh, not at least two this two uh, that there are two intervals in c2 it's always contained in f1 f1 now out of this two out of this two closed interval suppose say these two are the closed interval which is contained in f1 now in this these two closed interval e2 does not belong to one of the interval suppose the possibility that E2 is not in both the set, both the intervals, E2 may be in the remaining interval, remaining one of the interval. Now, there will be at least one interval such that it, E2 is not in that set. E2 is not in that. Take that set as this. Suppose E2 is not in this interval, take it as this. Suppose E2 is not in this set, take this set as F2. Suppose it is not in this, take it as this set F2. Suppose it is not in this, take it as F2. But E2 must be in one of the interval, one of the interval. Now, that is such that E2 is not belongs to F2. Now, take E3, E3. Now, with respect to E3, we get the set C3 in a similar way, we get C3. Now, in C3, we have, at, there, are, there, are, there, is, there exists two interval which is contained in f2 such that from these two intervals some these two intervals we consider the interval which is not containing e3 which is not containing e3 take it as f3 take it as f3. so in the in the con, con, uh, of, uh, continuing this uh, uh, this process we get a collection f n f n 
what are these it's a collection of closed sets closed sets with the property with the property en does not belongs to fn for all n for all n moreover moreover observe moreover observe f2 is is contained in f1 similarly f3 is contained in f2 so this is a decreasing sequence decreasing sequence so fn plus 1 is contained in fn for all n for all n so we have a sequence of closed set we have a sequence of closed set such that uh, en does not belongs to fn for all n and fn is a decreasing sequence that is fn k fn plus 1 is contained in fn for all n for all n okay now this fn is a, a decreasing sequence of closed sets hence by using a nested theorem nested theorem we get intersection fn n is from 1 to infinity is non empty is non empty now this is non empty implies we can get an element say let x belongs to the intersection now x belongs to intersection moreover now also observe that each fn is contained in cn for all n for all n therefore therefore intersection fn n from 1 to infinity is also contained in intersection cn n is from 1 to infinity and what is this intersection it is nothing but c now we have chosen an element x belongs to fn x belongs to intersection fn implies x belongs to c, c. Now, x belongs to c x belongs to c implies implies now c is enumeration e k k ranges from 1 to infinity this implies x must be equal to some e uh, say e, uh, e n e n for some n for some n between 1 and infinity it's an, for n a natural number n for some n belongs to n for some n belongs to n since x belongs to c now x belongs to e n e n implies implies x because x is equal to e n e n and e n is not in f n f n this implies x does not belong to fn x does not belong to fn but but we have we have taken x from intersection this implies x belongs to fn for all n for all n so we get a two contradictory statement that is x belongs to fn for all n we get an n we get an n belongs to n such that x does not belong to n this is not true this is not true it is not true not it's a contradiction it's a contradiction why we got contradiction because we assumed that we assumed that this c is countable c is countable so this is not true therefore therefore c is an uncountable set uncountable set now observe now observe c is an uncountable set and that that's count counter set this counter set is an uncountable set and having measure zero and having measure zero so we had a result that if a set is countable then its measure is zero but if the set is zero measure is if the measure of a set is zero then the set need not be countable and this is the counter set is the example for that can counter set is the example for that here counter set is measurable and its measure zero but the c is not countable it is uncountable set it is uncountable set okay now moving further moving further 